Airport, Wikipedia article audio. An airport is an aerodrome with extended facilities, mostly for commercial air transport. Airports often have facilities to store and maintain aircraft, and a control tower. An airport consists of a landing area, which comprises an aerially accessible open space including at least one operationally active surface such as a runway for a plane to take off or a helipad, and often includes adjacent utility buildings such as control towers, hangars and terminals. Larger airports may have fixed base operator services, airport aprons, taxiway bridges, air traffic control centers, passenger facilities such as restaurants and lounges, and emergency services. An airport with a helipad for rotorcraft but no runway is called a heliport. An airport for use by seaplanes and amphibious aircraft is called a seaplane base. Such a base typically includes a stretch of open water for takeoffs and landings, and seaplane docks for tying up. Landside and airside areas Air traffic control presence An international airport has additional facilities for customs and passport control as well as incorporating all of the aforementioned elements above. Such airports rank among the most complex and largest of all built typologies with 15 of the top 50 buildings by floor area being airport terminals. In warfare, airports can become the focus of intense fighting, for example the Battle of Tripoli Airport or the Battle for Donetsk Airport, both taking place in 2014. An aerodrome primarily for military use is called an airbase or air station. Airports are divided into landside and airside. Landside includes areas such as check-in, parking lots, public transport railway stations and access roads. Airside includes all areas accessible to aircraft, including runways, taxiways, and aprons slash ramps. Passage between landside and airside is tightly controlled at all airports. To access airside, one must go through security, and if applicable, passport control too. This applies to everyone, including staff. Most major airports provide commercial outlets for products and services. Airports may also contain premium and VIP services. The premium and VIP services may include express check-in and dedicated check-in counters. In addition to people, airports move cargo around the clock. Many large airports are located near railway trunk routes. The majority of the world's airports are non-towered, with no air traffic control presence. Busy airports have air traffic control system. All airports use a traffic pattern to assure smooth traffic flow between departing and arriving aircraft. There are a number of aids available to pilots though not all airports are equipped with them. Many airports have lighting that help guide planes using the runways and taxiways at night or in rain, snow, or fog. In the U.S. and Canada, the vast majority of airports, large and small, will either have some form of automated airport weather station, a human observer or a combination of the two. Air safety is an important concern in the operation of an airport, and airports often have their own safety services. Terminology The terms aerodrome, airfield and airstrip may also be used to refer to airports, and the terms heliport, seaplane base and stole port refer to airports dedicated exclusively to helicopters, seaplanes or short takeoff and landing aircraft. In colloquial use, the terms airport and aerodrome are often interchanged. However, in general, the term airport may imply or confer a certain stature upon the aviation facility that an aerodrome may not have achieved.
In some jurisdictions, airport is a legal term of art reserved exclusively for those aerodromes certified or licensed as airports by the relevant National Aviation Authority after meeting specified certification criteria or regulatory requirements. Infrastructure That is to say, all airports are aerodromes, but not all aerodromes are airports. In jurisdictions where there is no legal distinction between aerodrome and airport, which term to use in the name of an aerodrome may be a commercial decision. Aerodrome is uncommon in the United States. Smaller or less developed airports, which represent the vast majority, often have a single runway shorter than 1000 m. Larger airports for airline flights generally have paved runways 2000 m or longer. Many small airports have dirt, grass, or gravel runways, rather than asphalt or concrete. In the United States, the minimum dimensions for dry, hard landing fields are defined by the far landing and takeoff field lengths. These include considerations for safety margins during landing and takeoff. Heavier aircraft require longer runways. Airport Ownership and Operation The longest public use runway in the world is at Kamdo Bamda Airport in China. It has a length of 5,500 m. The world's widest paved runway is at Ulyanovsk Vostokny Airport in Russia and is 105 m wide. Airport Structures As of 2009, the CIA stated that there were approximately 44,000 airports or airfields recognizable from the air around the world, including 15,095 in the U.S the U.S. having the most in the world. Products and Services Most of the world's airports are owned by local, regional, or national government bodies who then lease the airport to private corporations who oversee the airport's operation. For example, in the United Kingdom the state-owned British Airports Authority originally operated eight of the nation's major commercial airports it was subsequently privatized in the late 1980s, and following its takeover by the Spanish Ferrovial Consortium in 2006, has been further divested and downsized to operating just Heathrow now. Germany's Frankfurt Airport is managed by the quasi-private firm from Port. While in India GMR Group operates, through joint ventures, Indira Gandhi International Airport and Rajiv Gandhi International Airport. Bengaluru International Airport and Chhatrapati Shivahi International Airport are controlled by GVK Group. The rest of India's airports are managed by the Airports Authority of India. In Pakistan nearly all civilian airports are owned and operated by the Pakistan Civil Aviation Authority except for Sialkot International Airport which has a distinctions of being the first privately owned public airport in Pakistan and South Asia. In the United States commercial airports are generally operated directly by government entities or government created airport authorities such as the Los Angeles World Airports Authority that oversees several airports in the greater Los Angeles area, including Los Angeles International Airport. Premium and VIP Services In Canada, the Federal Authority, Transport Canada, divested itself of all but the remotest airports in 1999-2000. Now most airports in Canada are owned and operated by individual legal authorities or are municipally owned. Many U.S. airports still lease part or all of their facilities to outside firms, who operate functions such as retail management and parking. In the U.S., all commercial airport runways are certified by the FAA under the Code of Federal Regulations Title 14 Part 139, 
certification of commercial service airports but maintained by the local airport under the regulatory authority of the FAA. Despite the reluctance to privatize airports in the U.S., the government-owned, contractor-operated arrangement is the standard for the operation of commercial airports in the rest of the world. Airports are divided into landside and airside areas. Landside areas include parking lots, public transportation train stations and access roads. Airside areas include all areas accessible to aircraft, including runways, taxiways, and aprons. Access from landside areas to airside areas is tightly controlled at most airports. Passengers on commercial flights access airside areas through terminals, where they can purchase tickets, clear security check, or claim luggage and board aircraft through gates. The waiting areas which provide passenger access to aircraft are typically called concourses, although this term is often used interchangeably with terminal. The area where aircraft park next to a terminal to load passengers and baggage is known as a ramp. Parking areas for aircraft away from terminals are called aprons. Cargo and Freight Service Airports can be towered or non-towered, depending on air traffic density and available funds. Due to their high capacity and busy airspace, many international airports have air traffic control located on site. Support Services Airports with international flights have customs and immigration facilities. However, as some countries have agreements that allow travel between them without customs and immigrations, such facilities are not a definitive need for an international airport. International flights often require a higher level of physical security, although in recent years, many countries have adopted the same level of security for international and domestic travel. Australia a growing number of airports are installing solar photovoltaic arrays to offset their electricity use. The National Renewable Energy Lab has shown this can be done safely. Some airport structures include on-site hotels built within or attached to a terminal building. Airport hotels have grown popular due to their convenience for transient passengers and easy accessibility to the airport terminal. Many airport hotels also have agreements with airlines to provide overnight lodging for displaced passengers. Canada Floating airports are being designed which could be located out at sea and which would use designs such as pneumatic stabilized platform technology. Airport Access Internal Transport History and Development Airport Designation and Naming Most major airports provide commercial outlets for products and services. Most of these companies, many of which are internationally known brands, are located within the departure areas. These include clothing boutiques and restaurants and in the U.S. amounted to $4.2 billion in 2015. Prices charged for items sold at these outlets are generally higher than those outside the airport. However, some airports now regulate costs to keep them comparable to street prices. This term is misleading as prices often match the manufacturer's suggested retail price but are almost never discounted. Index of Aviation Articles, List of Cities with More Than One Airport List of countries without an airport, list of hub airports. Apart from major fast food chains, some airport restaurants offer regional cuisine specialties for those in transit so that they may sample local food or culture without leaving the airport. Major airports in such countries as Russia and Japan offer miniature sleeping units within the airport that are available for rent by the hour. The smallest type is the capsule hotel popular in Japan. 
A slightly larger variety is known as a sleep box. An even larger type is provided by the company Yatel. Airports may also contain premium and VIP services. The premium and VIP services may include express check-in and dedicated check-in counters. These services are usually reserved for first and business class passengers, premium frequent flyers, and members of the airline's clubs. Premium services may sometimes be open to passengers who are members of a different airline's frequent flyer program. This can sometimes be part of a reciprocal deal, as when multiple airlines are part of the same alliance, or as a ploy to attract premium customers away from rival airlines. Sometimes these premium services will be offered to a non-premium passenger if the airline has made a mistake in handling of the passenger, such as unreasonable delays or mishandling of checked baggage. Airline lounges frequently offer free or reduced cost food, as well as alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. Lounges themselves typically have seating, showers, quiet areas, televisions, computer, Wi-Fi and internet access, and power outlets that passengers may use for their electronic equipment. Some airline lounges employ baristas, bartenders, and gourmet chefs. Airlines sometimes operate multiple lounges within the one airport terminal allowing ultra-premium customers, such as first-class customers, additional services, which are not available to other premium customers. Multiple lounges may also prevent overcrowding of the lounge facilities. Airport Security In addition to people, airports move cargo around the clock. Cargo airlines often have their own on-site and adjacent infrastructure to transfer parcels between ground and air. Cargo terminal facilities are areas where international airports export cargo has to be stored after customs clearance and prior to loading on the aircraft. Similarly import cargo that is offloaded needs to be in bond before the consignee decides to take delivery. Areas have to be kept aside for examination of export and import cargo by the airport authorities. Designated areas or sheds may be given to airlines or freight forward ring agencies. Every cargo terminal has a land side and an air side. The land side is where the exporters and importers through either their agents or by themselves deliver or collect shipments while the air side is where loads are moved to or from the aircraft. In addition cargo terminals are divided into distinct areas export, import, and interline or transshipment. Airport Operations Air Traffic Control Traffic Pattern in the USA, aircraft and passenger boarding bridges maintenance, pilot operations, commissioning, training services, aircraft rental, and hangar rental are most often performed by a fixed base operator. At major airports, particularly those used as hubs, airlines may operate their own support facilities. Some airports, Typically military air bases, have long runways used as emergency landing sites. Many air bases have arresting equipment for fast aircraft, known as a resting gear a strong cable suspended just above the runway and attached to a hydraulic reduction gear mechanism. Together with the landing aircraft's arresting hook, it is used in situations where the aircraft's brakes would be insufficient by themselves. In the United States, many larger civilian airports also host an Air National Guard base. Many large airports are located near railway trunk routes for seamless connection of multimodal transport, for instance Frankfurt Airport, Amsterdam Airport Skip Hall, London Heathrow Airport, Tokyo Haneda Airport, Tokyo Narita Airport. London Gatwick Airport and London Stansted Airport. 
It is also common to connect an airport and a city with rapid transit, light rail lines or other non-road public transport systems. Some examples of this would include the AirTran JFK at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York, Link Light Rail that runs from the heart of downtown Seattle to Seattle-Tacoma International Airport, and the Silver Line T at Boston S. Logan International Airport by the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. Such a connection lowers risk of missed flights due to traffic congestion. Large airports usually have access also through controlled access highways from which motor vehicles enter either the departure loop or the arrival loop. The distances passengers need to move within a large airport can be substantial. It is common for airports to provide moving walkways and buses. In 2007, ThyssenKrupp installed two high-speed walkways in Terminal 1 at Toronto Pearson International Airport. They connect the international gates in the newly opened Pier F, located at one end of the pier, with the rest of the terminal. One walkway serves departing passengers travelling towards the gates and the other serves arriving passengers travelling towards the terminal. The Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport has a tram that takes people through the concourses and baggage claim. Major airports with more than one terminal offer inter-terminal transportation, such as Mexico City International Airport, where the domestic building of Terminal 1 is connected by Aerotron to Terminal 2, on the other side of the airport. Navigational Aids the earliest aircraft takeoff and landing sites were grassy fields. The plane could approach at any angle that provided a favorable wind direction. A slight improvement was the dirt-only field, which eliminated the drag from grass. However, these only functioned well in dry conditions. Later, concrete surfaces would allow landings regardless of meteorological conditions. The title of world's oldest airport is disputed, but College Park Airport in Maryland, U.S., established in 1909 by Wilbur Wright, is generally agreed to be the world's oldest continually operating airfield, although it serves only general aviation traffic. Bisbee Douglas International Airport in Arizona was declared the first international airport of the Americas by U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1943. Pearson Field Airport in Vancouver, Washington, had a dirigible land in 1905 and planes in 1911 and is still in use. Hamburg Airport opened in January 1911 making it the oldest commercial airport in the world which is still in operation. Bremen Airport opened in 1913 and remains in use, although it served as an American military field between 1945 and 1949. Amsterdam Airport Schiphol opened on September 16, 1916, as a military airfield but only accepted civil aircraft from December 17, 1920, allowing Sydney Airport in Sydney, Australia which started operations in January 1920 to claim to be one of the world's oldest continually operating commercial airports. Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport in Minneapolis-St. Paul, Minnesota opened in 1920 and has been in continuous commercial service since. It serves about 35 million passengers each year and continues to expand, recently opening a new 11,000-foot runway. Of the airports constructed during this early period in aviation, it is one of the largest and busiest that is still currently operating. Rome Cimpino Airport, opened 1916 is also a contender, as well as the Don Muiang International Airport near Bangkok, Thailand, which opened in 1914. Increased aircraft traffic during World War I led to the construction of landing fields. 
Aircraft had to approach these from certain directions and this led to the development of aids for directing the approach and landing slope. Following the war, some of these military airfields added civil facilities for handling passenger traffic. One of the earliest such fields was Paris Le Barguet Airport at Le Barguet, near Paris. The first airport to operate scheduled international commercial services was Hounslow Heath Aerodrome in August 1919, but it was closed and supplanted by Croydon Airport in March 1920. In 1922, the first permanent airport and commercial terminal solely for commercial aviation was opened at Flughafen Davao near what was then Königsberg, East Prussia. The airports of this era used a paved apron, which permitted night flying as well as landing heavier aircraft. The first lighting used on an airport was during the latter part of the 1920s, in the 1930s approach lighting came into use. These indicated the proper direction and angle of descent. The colors and flash intervals of these lights became standardized under the International Civil Aviation Organization. In the 1940s, the slope line approach system was introduced. This consisted of two rows of lights that formed a funnel indicating an aircraft's position on the glide slope. Additional lights indicated incorrect altitude and direction. After World War II, Airport design became more sophisticated. Passenger buildings were being grouped together in an island, with runways arranged in groups about the terminal. This arrangement permitted expansion of the facilities. But it also meant that passengers had to travel further to reach their plane. An improvement in the landing field was the introduction of grooves in the concrete surface. These run perpendicular to the direction of the landing aircraft and serve to draw off excess water in rainy conditions that could build up in front of the plane's wheels. Airport construction boomed during the 1960s with the increase in jet aircraft traffic. Runways were extended out to 3000 m. The fields were constructed out of reinforced concrete using a slip form machine that produces a continual slab with no disruptions along the length. The early 1960s also saw the introduction of jet bridge systems to modern airport terminals, an innovation which eliminated outdoor passenger boarding. These systems became commonplace in the United States by the 1970s. Airports are uniquely represented by their IATA Airport Code and ICAO Airport Code. Most airport names include the location. Many airport names honor a public figure, commonly a politician, a monarch like in Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport, a cultural leader such as in Liverpool John Lennon Airport or a prominent figure in aviation history of the region sometimes even famous poets. Taxiway signs Lighting Some airports have unofficial names, possibly so widely circulated that its official name is little used or even known. Some airport names include the word international to indicate their ability to handle international air traffic. This includes some airports that do not have scheduled international airline services. Airport Apron Airport security normally requires baggage checks, metal screenings of individual persons, and rules against any object that could be used as a weapon. Since the September 11th attacks and the Real ID Act of 2005, Airport security has dramatically increased and got tighter and stricter than ever before. Weather Observations Safety Management Airport Ground Crew Environmental Concerns and Sustainability Military Airbase Airports and Entertainment Filming at Airports 
Airport Directories A controlled or towered aerodrome has an operating control tower that is responsible for overseeing the safe, orderly, and expeditious flow of air traffic. Pilots are required to maintain two-way radio communication with air traffic controllers, and to acknowledge and comply with their instructions. Non-towered airport have no operating control tower and therefore two-way radio communications are not required, though it is good operating practice for pilots to transmit their intentions on the airport's common traffic advisory frequency for the benefit of other aircraft in the area. The CTAF may be a universal integrated community, multicom, flight service station, or tower frequency. The majority of the world's airports are non-towered, with no air traffic control presence. However, at particularly busy airports, or airports with other special requirements, there is an air traffic control system whereby controllers direct aircraft movements via radio or other communications links. This coordinated oversight facilitates safety and speed in complex operations where traffic moves in all three dimensions. Air traffic control responsibilities at airports are usually divided into at least two main areas, ground and tower, though a single controller may work both stations. The busiest airports also have clearance delivery, apron control, and other specialized ATC stations. Ground control is responsible for directing all ground traffic in designated movement areas, except the traffic on runways. This includes planes, baggage trains, snowplows, grass cutters, fuel trucks, stair trucks, airline food trucks, conveyor belt vehicles and other vehicles. Ground control will instruct these vehicles on which taxiways to use, which runway they will use, where they will park, and when it is safe to cross runways. When a plane is ready to take off it will stop short of the runway, at which point it will be turned over to tower control. After a plane has landed, it will depart the runway and be returned to ground control. Tower control controls aircraft on the runway and in the controlled airspace immediately surrounding the airport. Tower controllers may use radar to locate an aircraft's position in three-dimensional space, or they may rely on pilot position reports and visual observation. They coordinate the sequencing of aircraft in the traffic pattern and direct aircraft on how to safely join and leave the circuit. Aircraft which are only passing through the airspace must also contact tower control in order to be sure that they remain clear of other traffic. At all airports the use of a traffic pattern is possible. They may help to assure smooth traffic flow between departing and arriving aircraft. There is no technical need within modern aviation for performing this pattern, provided there is no queue. And due to the so-called slot times, the overall traffic planning tend to assure landing queues are avoided. If for instance an aircraft approaches runway 17 from the north, the aircraft will land as fast as possible by just turning 10 degrees and follow the glide path without orbit the runway for visual reasons, whenever this is possible. For smaller piston-engined airplanes at smaller airfields without ILS equipment, things are very different though. Generally, this pattern is a circuit consisting of five legs that form a rectangle. Each leg is named, and ATC directs pilots on how to join and leave the circuit. Traffic patterns are flown at one specific altitude, usually 800 or 1,000 feet above ground level. Standard traffic patterns are left-handed, meaning all turns are made to the left. One of the main reasons for this is that pilots sit on the left side of the airplane, and a left-hand pattern improves their visibility of the airport and pattern. Right-handed patterns do exist 
usually because of obstacles such as a mountain, or to reduce noise for local residents. The predetermined circuit helps traffic flow smoothly because all pilots know what to expect, and helps reduce the chance of a mid-air collision. At extremely large airports, a circuit is in place but not usually used. Rather, aircraft request approach clearance while they are still hours away from the airport, often before they even take off from their departure point. Large airports have a frequency called clearance delivery which is used by departing aircraft specifically for this purpose. This then allows aircraft to take the most direct approach path to the runway and land without worrying about interference from other aircraft. While this system keeps the airspace free and is simpler for pilots, it requires detailed knowledge of how aircraft are planning to use the airport ahead of time and is therefore only possible with large commercial airliners on pre-scheduled flights. The system has recently become so advanced that controllers can predict whether an aircraft will be delayed on landing before it even takes off, that aircraft can then be delayed on the ground, rather than wasting expensive fuel waiting in the air. There are a number of aids available to pilots, though not all airports are equipped with them. A visual approach slope indicator helps pilots fly the approach for landing. Some airports are equipped with a VHF omnidirectional range to help pilots find the direction to the airport. VORs are often accompanied by a distance measuring equipment to determine the distance to the VOR. VORs are also located off airports, where they serve to provide airways for aircraft to navigate upon. In poor weather, Pilots will use an instrument landing system to find the runway and fly the correct approach, even if they cannot see the ground. The number of instrument approaches based on the use of the global positioning system is rapidly increasing and may eventually be the primary means for instrument landings. Larger airports sometimes offer precision approach radar but these systems are more common at military air bases than civilian airports. The aircraft's horizontal and vertical movement is tracked via radar, and the controller tells the pilot his position relative to the approach slope. Once the pilots can see the runway lights, they may continue with a visual landing. Airport guidance signs provide direction and information to taxiing aircraft and airport vehicles. Smaller aerodromes may have few or no signs, relying instead on diagrams and charts. Many airports have lighting that help guide planes using the runways and taxiways at night or in rain or fog. On runways, green lights indicate the beginning of the runway for landing while red lights indicate the end of the runway. Runway edge lighting consists of white lights spaced out on both sides of the runway, indicating the edge. Some airports have more complicated lighting on the runways including lights that run down the center line of the runway and lights that help indicate the approach. Low traffic airports may use pilot controlled lighting to save electricity and staffing costs. Along taxiways, blue lights indicate the taxiway's edge, and some airports have embedded green lights that indicate the center line. Both shielded and unshielded cable are listed in the specifications for the power cables on an airport apron ramp. Weather observations at the airport are crucial to safe takeoffs and landings. In the US and Canada, the vast majority of airports, large and small, will either have some form of automated airport weather station, whether an AWOS, a SOS, or AWSS, a human observer or a combination of the two. These weather observations, predominantly in the METER format, are available over the radio, through Automatic Terminal Information Service, via the ATC or the Flight Service Station. Planes take off and land into the wind in order to achieve maximum performance. 
Because pilots need instantaneous information during landing, a windsock is also kept in view of the runway. Aviation windsocks are made with lightweight material, withstand strong winds and are lit up after dark or in foggy weather. Because visibility of windsocks is limited, often multiple glow orange windsocks are placed on both sides of the runway. Air safety is an important concern in the operation of an airport, and almost every airfield includes equipment and procedures for handling emergency situations. Airport crash tender crews are equipped for dealing with airfield accidents, crew and passenger extractions, and the hazards of highly flammable aviation fuel. The crews are also trained to deal with situations such as bomb threats, hijacking, and terrorist activities. Hazards to aircraft include debris, nesting birds, and reduced friction levels due to environmental conditions such as ice, snow, or rain. Part of runway maintenance is airfield rubber removal which helps maintain friction levels. The fields must be kept clear of debris using cleaning equipment so that loose material does not become a projectile and enter an engine duct. In adverse weather conditions, ice and snow clearing equipment can be used to improve traction on the landing strip. For waiting aircraft, equipment is used to spray special de-icing fluids on the wings. Many airports are built near open fields or wetlands. These tend to attract bird populations, which can pose a hazard to aircraft in the form of bird strikes. Airport crews often need to discourage birds from taking up residence. Some airports are located next to parks, golf courses, or other low-density uses of land. Other airports are located near densely populated urban or suburban areas. An airport can have areas where collisions between aircraft on the ground tend to occur. Records are kept of any incursions where aircraft or vehicles are in an inappropriate location, allowing these hot spots to be identified. These locations then undergo special attention by transportation authorities and airport administrators. During the 1980s, a phenomenon known as microburst became a growing concern due to aircraft accidents caused by microburst wind shear, such as Delta Airlines Flight 191. Microburst radar was developed as an aid to safety during landing, giving two to five minutes warning to aircraft in the vicinity of the field of a microburst event. Some airfields now have a special surface known as soft concrete at the end of the runway that behaves somewhat like styrofoam, bringing the plane to a relatively rapid halt as the material disintegrates. These surfaces are useful when the runway is located next to a body of water or other hazard, and prevent the planes from overrunning the end of the field. Most airports have ground crew handling the loading and unloading of passengers, crew, baggage and other services. Some ground crew are linked to specific airlines operating at the airport. Many ground crew at the airport work at the aircraft. A tow tractor pulls the aircraft to one of the air bridges, the ground power unit is plugged in. It keeps the electricity running in the plane when it stands at the terminal. The engines are not working, therefore they do not generate the electricity, as they do in flight. The passengers disembark using the air bridge. Mobile stairs can give the ground crew more access to the aircraft's cabin. There is a cleaning service to clean the aircraft after the aircraft lands. Flight catering provides the food and drinks on flights. A toilet waste truck removes the human waste from the tank which holds the waste from the toilets in the aircraft. A water truck fills the water tanks of the aircraft. A fuel transfer vehicle transfers aviation fuel from fuel tanks underground, to the aircraft tanks.
A tractor and its dollies bring in luggage from the terminal to the aircraft. They also carry luggage to the terminal if the aircraft has landed, and is being unloaded. High loaders lift the heavy luggage containers to the gate of the cargo hold. The ground crew push the luggage containers into the hold. If it has landed, they rise, the ground crew push the luggage container on the high loader, which carries it down. The luggage container is then pushed on one of the tractor's dollies. The conveyor, which is a conveyor belt on a truck, brings in the awkwardly shaped, or late luggage. The air bridge is used again by the new passengers to embark the aircraft. The tow tractor pushes the aircraft away from the terminal to a taxi area. The length of time an aircraft remains on the ground in between consecutive flights is known as turnaround time. Airlines pay great attention to minimizing turnaround times in an effort to keep aircraft utilization high, with times scheduled as low as 25 minutes for jet aircraft operated by low-cost carriers on narrow-body aircraft. Aircraft noise is a major cause of noise disturbance to residents living near airports. Sleep can be affected if the airports operate night and early morning flights. Aircraft noise not only occurs from takeoff and landings, but also ground operations including maintenance and testing of aircraft. Noise can have other noise health effects. Other noise and environmental concerns are vehicle traffic causing noise and pollution on roads leading the airport. The construction of new airports or addition of runways to existing airports, is often resisted by local residents because of the effect on countryside, historical sites, local flora and fauna. Due to the risk of collision between birds and aircraft, Large airports undertake population control programs where they frighten or shoot birds. The construction of airports has been known to change local weather patterns. For example, because they often flatten out large areas, they can be susceptible to fog in areas where fog rarely forms. In addition, they generally replace trees and grass with pavement, they often change drainage patterns in agricultural areas, leading to more flooding, runoff and erosion in the surrounding land. Some of the airport administrations prepare and publish annual environmental reports in order to show how they consider these environmental concerns in airport management issues and how they protect environment from airport operations. These reports contain all environmental protection measures performed by airport administration in terms of water, air, soil, and noise pollution, resource conservation and protection of natural life around the airport. The world's first airport to be fully powered by solar energy is located at Kachi, India. Another airport known for considering environmental parameters is the Seymour Airport at Galapagos Islands. An airbase, sometimes referred to as an air station or airfield, provides basing and support of military aircraft. Some airbases, known as military airports, provide facilities similar to their civilian counterparts. For example, RAF Briais Norton in the UK has a terminal which caters to passengers for the Royal Air Force's scheduled TriStar flights to the Falkland Islands. Some airbases are CO located with civilian airports, sharing the same ATC facilities, runways, taxiways, and emergency services, but with separate terminals, parking areas, and hangars. Bardu Foss Airport Bardu Foss Air Station in Norway and Pun Airport in India are examples of this. An aircraft carrier is a warship that functions as a mobile airbase. Aircraft carriers allow a naval force to project air power without having to depend on local bases for land-based aircraft. After their development in World War I, 
aircraft carriers replaced the battleship as the centerpiece of a modern fleet during World War II. Airports have played major roles in films and television programs due to their very nature as a transport and international hub, and sometimes because of distinctive architectural features of particular airports. One such example of this is The Terminal, a film about a man who becomes permanently grounded in an airport terminal and must survive only on the food and shelter provided by the airport. They are also one of the major elements in movies such as the V.I.P.S, Airplane, Airport, Die Hard 2, Soul Plane, Jackie Brown, Get Shorty, Home Alone, Liar Liar, Passenger 57, Final Destination, Unaccompanied Minors, Catch Me If You Can, Rendition and the Lang Oliers. They have also played important parts in television series like Lost, The Amazing Race, America's Next Top Model, Cycle 10 which have significant parts of their story set within airports. In other programs and films, airports are merely indicative of journeys, e.g. Good Will Hunting. Several computer simulation games put the player in charge of an airport. These include the Airport Tycoon series, Sim Airport, and Airport CEO. Most airports welcome filming on site, although it must be agreed in advance and may be subject to a fee. Landside, filming can take place in all public areas. However, airside, filming is sometimes heavily restricted. To film in an airside location, all visitors must go through security, the same as passengers, and be accompanied by a full airside pass holder and have photographic identification with them at all times. Filming is strictly prohibited in security, immigration slash customs and baggage reclaim. Each national aviation authority has a source of information about airports in their country. This will contain information on airport elevation, airport lighting, runway information, communications facilities, and frequencies, hours of operation, nearby nav aids, and contact information where prior arrangement for landing is necessary. Infraro is responsible for the airports in Brazil. Lists